Brockton residents and business owners, this is Mayor Robert Sullivan and last month the city conducted its swearing in ceremony on inauguration day here at City Hall. However, due to the COVID pandemic, the ceremony was held in a limited and an abbreviated capacity. As such, I was unable to present my official inaugural address, which I am proudly here to present to you today virtually in our wonderful collaboration with Brockton Community Access BCA. I am so honored to be here today talking to you, the great and proud people of our City of Champions, as I begin my second term as your mayor, mayor of the City of Brockton. I tell people everywhere that I go how proud I am to have been raised and born here in the City of Brockton, a product of the Brockton Public Schools and a proud graduate of Brockton High School class of 1988. Uh, I've made my home here in the city, I have my dream job, leading our incredible city at such a time of growth and opportunity, it's really one of the great joys of my life and I consider it a privilege and a true honor. I wanna take the time to thank my wife Maria and my three children, Tommy, Grace and William, my parents, Robert and Susan Sullivan, my in-laws, Anthony and Lorraine Louise, and all my family, friends and colleagues who so support me every day so that I can continue to work uh, to make sure Brockton is moving forward. I would also like to thank the mayor's office team uh, which consists of, consists of diverse, dedicated professionals who work every single day to enhance our city and our community. And a special thank you to my chief of staff, Mrs. Sydney Merrill. My sincere thanks to local elected officials, city councilors, school committee members here in Brockton Public School and Southeastern Regional Vocational Technical High School as well. I'm just so thankful for Senator Mike Brady and State Representative Jerry Cassidy and State Representative Michelle Dubois Superintendent Mike Thomas and the city clerk Tim Cruz and all of the dedicated hardworking city and school employees. In addition, I'm truly, truly grateful for the support and friendship provided, especially during COVID, to our friends in Plymouth County, all the elected officials. I'm grateful for Congressman Stephen Lynch, Senator Ed Markey, Senator Elizabeth Warren, Governor Charlie Baker and Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito. It's an exciting time here in the city of Brockton as we all work together uh, toward recovering and rebuilding from the damage caused by COVID-19, the pandemic, which unfortunately, as I speak to you, we've lost 527 Brocktontonians to this virus and my sympathy and goes out to all of the loved ones. We have worked hard to support those in need throughout the pandemic and keeping our residents safe was paramount. From our first responders to our teachers and school administrators who, who have really kept the schools open, to our frontline healthcare workers, to the store clerks and the delivery drivers here in our city. Can't forget our, our city workers and the restaurant employees and everyone else who has kept Brockton running over these past two difficult years. I just wanna say a heartfelt thank you. We have pulled together in the face of great adversity to keep Brocktonians safe Brockton was the first municipality throughout Plymouth County to receive and distribute homemade masks for its city employees, residents, and business owners. We created and staffed a, a health equity task force and a wellness trust team in my office, led by John Messia, Director of Constituent Services and Community Outreach, to assist with a plethora of social issues brought on by the pandemic. Issues like food insecurity, educational gaps, lack of education and information about COVID-19, vaccines, PPE access, and just so much more. You know, we spent a million dollars, which was reimbursed by the CARES Act, to convert the Shaw Center into a premier vaccination site. In fact, U.S. Senator Ed Markey called it a model for the rest of the country. I was truly honored when Governor Charlie Baker and Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito came to the Shaw Center to join me when the three of us received our booster shots. That location and the dedicated medical professionals working there each day have saved lives, and that's a fact, a simple fact. We improve vaccine access for residents by providing pop-up clinics, vaccine clinics, in conjunction with our city partners at local churches and schools and even supermarkets. We engage with residents by participating in informational sharing with our partners at the NAACP, taking part in weekly calls with all the local pastors here in Brockton, securing airtime on local radio shows to educate and inform about the virus. We also established the Brockton Together Fund in conjunction with the United Way, and it was to mobilize resources to provide emergency financial assistance to individuals and families impacted greatly by the pandemic. Folks, Brockton residents, we raised over $78,000 towards that fund. Working with our partners at Brockton Neighborhood Health Center, led by Executive Sue Joss and Plymouth County, 
Uh, we have distributed thousands of at-home COVID-19 test kits to nonprofits and our faith-based organizations, really just to distribute to our residents, to save lives and get to testing. Our schools have just thrived tremendously under the leadership of uh, Superintendent Mike Thomas, my friend and my colleague. Despite those challenges of the pandemic, we have faced unprecedented challenges with staff being out sick, uh, but in-person learning has continued and it will for the remainder of the year. Brockton has some of the best teachers and school administrators, not just in the Commonwealth, but in the nation, in the country. And with the recent influx of federal money, it's only gonna improve our schools here in the city of Brockton. City as a whole, we've received $18 million in CARES Act funding, including $4 million to purchase laptops for every single child in the Brockton public school system. We've invested millions of dollars in the opera federal money towards renovating Campanelli Stadium and the Shaw Center. This refurbished stadium features new state-of-the-art lighting and locker rooms and upgraded ventilation systems and other top quality amenities. Campanelli Stadium is a special place to take in a ball game or a concert, and it truly has the potential to be a centerpiece of Brockton's cultural fabric. We will soon be announcing some exciting sporting events and concerts at the stadium that will truly ensure the investments pay off for the fans, the residents, and indeed our local economy. Last month, we launched the Opera Grant Program to help Brockton focus nonprofit and faith-based organizations tap into the 17 million in federal funding that the city's received so far to help us recover and pivot and rebuild from COVID-19 pandemic. In fact, myself as mayor, I've authorized the commitment of $2 million out of the fiscal recovery funds for nonprofit agencies and faith-based organizations to use in their own pandemic recovery efforts. The mayor's office and the Department of Finance have held virtual Q&A, question and answer sessions with translators to discuss the details of this important grant program and answer those questions. We conducted actually an online application process and I'm so pleased to say that we've received over 40 applicants. Despite the difficult challenges we faced, we have remained resilient. We have moved forward with our economic development and our downtown revitalization plans, and we have made great strides towards becoming an even more equitable, inclusive, and welcoming city. We launched the uh, Brockton Open for Business Initiative, which is an effort to make sure that we will make it easier for businesses in Brockton uh, to do so in three ways, through re regulatory and policy adjustments, the introduction of new technology and best practices that indeed will facilitate the process of working with our city departments and, and also the hiring of new staff members whose primary focus will be to help businesses navigate government and the resources available to those people. With the help of our friends at the Old Colony Planning Council, we launched a new app called the Brockton MA City of Champions app. It connects our business community to the residents and the visitors of the city by listing restaurants and shopping and personal care services and just so, so much more. And you know, you've noticed that the cranes and construction crews downtown, uh, they're around and that's a good thing. Unlike mother, many other uh, communities in the Commonwealth, I made a decision not to close construction during the pandemic. I decided that we need to keep it open and it's positioned Brockton truly, truly in a, in a positive way as we emerge. And new housing and retail is soon gonna open downtown and even near the Campello commuter rail. The new influx of market rate housing units and downtown revitalization will truly inevitably bring about young professionals to our city of champions. Developers are touring available buildings and sites and they wanna invest, it's, it's high. The interest is high right now in the city of Brockton. And my commitment as mayor is for economic development to create hundreds of good paying jobs for Brocktonians. In collaboration with Mass Hire and the BRA, the Brockton Redevelopment Authority, we established a Brockton Business Assistance Program designed for businesses experiencing financial hardship due to the pandemic. And I'm proud to say that this program aided small businesses in job creation and job retention and helped maintain businesses within our community. Applicants were allowed to request up to $10,000 for their, their needs. And it was a grant, it was a program greatly assisted by city businesses and it was the focus to, to help. As mayor, my vision is to have a more inclusive and a welcoming city of Brockton. To that end, we partnered with Black Owned Brockton, a, a black owned small business on the first ever Maker's Market during Black Owned Business Month in August of 2021. Brockton based black owned business owners had the chance to sell their products at the Westgate Mall and outside City Hall here in the Plaza. It was awesome. And in addition, we made frequent visits 
uh, to businesses throughout the city of Brockton. We held meetings and fully supported the effort of many nonprofits and helped our residents through the adversity and this hardship that continues. An example is when we partnered with Haitian Community Partners to send donations over to Haiti following that devastating, devastating earthquake. You know, we've done some accomplishments that I'd like to share with you. I, I'm going to continue to work hard to make sure that Brockton has the best public transit, transit available, as well as amenities that help our renters and our homeowners. Uh, you know, we expect a vibrant, growing urban community. That's what we expect in a community like ours. Last year as mayor, and I serve as the chair of Bat Bus, we created a pilot program that offered free bus service on the weekends during the summer. We are working with our state and federal partners to increase and improve the MBTA services, commuter rail here in Brockton. We have three commuter stops here, and there are more than 700 new housing units in development within walking distance to these stops. Ensuring that reliable public transit is available to these new residents and businesses is one of my top priorities. We have also taken steps to improve the school bus system by creating our own transportation department. No longer will we need to rely on outside contractors. We have purchased a fleet of brand new state-of-the-art school buses. And this will save the city and the schools millions of dollars over the long term. And it's going to provide good paying jobs for residents here in the city. It also truly allows us to control our own destiny so we can use these buses to further benefit the students, extracurricular and sporting activities. We can try and transport them ourselves now. One other thing I want to just share is diversity and inclusion because um, upon looking at the history of Brock, and it's easy to realize we've always been known as a first community. And what I mean by that is uh, in Brockton, uh, we had the first department store, Santa Claus. We also here in the city had the first ever electrified fire station and movie theater and streetlight when Thomas Edison was here. And, and continuing with our tradition of being a first community, this year we held the first L ever LGTBQ flag raising ceremony, Brockton City Hall outside. It was awesome. In addition, we had the first ever transgender day of remembrance and flag raising here inside the city hall. And I created a community justice task force following that brutal murder of Mr. George Floyd. And I consisted of eight uh, participants, dedicated volunteers. It was headed by Phyllis Ellis, uh, who's the president of the Brockton area chapter of the NAACP. And we gathered ideas uh, on how to dismantle systemic racism in the areas of policing and education and public health and housing and economic development. And I want to just give a thank you to those dedicated folks, Phyllis Ellis and Dr. Uh, Mark Oliver, and Pastor Rob Conley, Attorney Michael Curry and Judge Michael Williams, Khalido Weaver and Darren Duarte and Nessie Dubuisson for your service on that task force. It means so much. The city also recently just hired its first diversity inclusion manager, Yolanda Kiner, and she's uh, charged to review workplace policies and procedures, execute training and events, and it's more to advance my vision of a fair, equitable, professional, and inclusive Brockton. We're putting everything in this. It needs to happen. 75% of my own staff are people of color, and we represent the four core languages spoken uh, here in the city in the mayor's office, and that's just a wonderful thing, and we're going to continue to do that. We're also implementing many of the recommendations of our great Community Justice Task Force. Our police department is truly one of the most diverse in the whole Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And we're continuing to ensure that the department appropriately, appropriately reflects the community that it serves. To that end, we created a junior cadet program uh, for teens and a cadet program for young city adults considering a career in law enforcement. Those are just two great initiatives. And, 38 of the junior cadets over the summer learned about criminal law and first aid, CPR, bike safety, leadership, team building, physical fitness, nutrition, basic personal finance, water safety, and even how to work with canine units. The five young adult uh, cadets learned about emergency 911, public safety telecommunications, criminal justice, information services, first responder, community service, research and investigations. And they're also uh, personally assisting police officers with fleet maintenance and record keeping and public inquiries and community events. And each cadet is charged uh, with allowing to ride around with police officers to really have a firsthand job experience. And I'm proud that the young Brocktonians have had the chance to participate in this great program to potentially pursue a wonderful career in law enforcement. Now listen, we're also in the process of implementing a, a bias-free policing policy and a revised use of force policy within the Brockton Police Department. 
And these are other recommendations that were, were rendered by the Community Justice Task Force Group. And I'm committed to ensuring our <coughs> streets are safe and that our police department is well trained and equipped and really prepared to keep the offices safe. In addition, during the past year, we, we instituted the walking beats and we've reinstated those in Campello and Montello and downtown. And in the nice summer months, we're utilizing the bicycle officers. And, you know, we must continue to provide a professional standard and a community policing practice that truly benefits our residents and our dedicated officers. It's a win-win situation. We hired 13 new firefighters this year in the fire department, 13, um, uh, which is a wonderful thing. And we're hiring additional police officers. And, you know, we're going to continue to hire. It's right to add uh, new employees. Housing's another thing. Like we collaborated with our neighborhood NeighborWorks Housing Solution and DHCD of Massachusetts to hold free Brockton raft application events for tenants and landlords and homeowners and advocates. And, you know, it was at the Shaw Center. It was the first event of its kind throughout the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. It was truly a wonderful event. Now, we have a lot more to do in the future. We really do. Brockton's future has never been brighter. And as I embark on this second term, I'm excited every day to see all the inspiring progress our city is making. Brockton sometimes gets a, a bad rap, um, but our city is strong and the people who grew up here and live here and work here and have come here, there are special people that make it a special place, value and family and community, really always constantly striving for success. The renaissance in downtown is gonna continue. It's been a long time coming and I make no mistake, uh, downtown Brockton is transforming into a safe, vibrant, welcoming, thriving neighborhood where people can come to dine and to shop and to live and to work. Brockton Beer Company, it's a, a brew pub that's going to be opening short, shortly. It's a diverse group of Brocktonians and it's going to open up on Main Street. It is the first brewery in the Commonwealth uh, that is minority owned and it's going to open up and it's really a wonderful thing. Haven't had a lot of opening up in downtown in several years. Listen, Petronelli Way is being transformed as well into a pedestrian mall, luxury apartments, retail. It's just a short walk from the main commuter rail. Thanks to $150,000 uh, funded and secured by State Rep. Jerry Cassidy, we're going to be building a statue dedicated to the wonderful, great, marvelous Marvin Hagler, boxing icon. This memorial will be a centerpiece of the downtown renaissance that will honor the champ's legacy, stand as a symbol of the city's working class roots, and be a tourist attraction for generations to come. Down on Frederick Douglass Way, it's just around the corner from here, we plan to revitalize the area around the Liberty Tree, the historic site where, where Douglass himself came and spoke, making sure that enslaved people uh, that had come enslaved and been released of that slavery had come here during uh, the Underground Railroad days. And uh, it's really a vital piece of the city's history that deserves a fitting memorial. And we're gonna get there, it's what needs to be done. Down on Montello Street, Trinity is doing their second phase right now. It's gonna be 113 quality housing units, just steps again from the commuter rail station. And we're gonna to continue to uh, move forward on building that brand new state-of-the-art public safety complex on Warren Avenue to add to our downtown transformation. The building will house the operations of the Brockton Fire Department, the Brockton Police Department, Brockton Emergency Management, also known as BEMA, and also the Brockton Informational Technology Center, the IT Center. In fact, it will relocate from Brockton High School to the new location on Warren Ave, and it's gonna free up additional classroom space that IT uses right now at Brockton High. This benefits our students and our staff. Now the budget for this tremendous undertaking is $98 million, a bonding authorization. And I wanna thank the city council for approving it. It's really projected right now to be completed by the year 2024. It's gonna be a game changer. Taking properties on Highland Street, uh, we're done so that now we can span this new project, the city block. Uh, and it's gonna be a remarkable endeavor all the way to West Elm Street. I am grateful to the team for their due diligence, the planning, the execution of this endeavor. It was thorough, it really was. And many meetings were held with residents and elected officials to communicate our plans and receive feedback. And those conversations continue to this day. This project would not have been possible if it wasn't supported by our legislature, the community, and of course, the dedicated city councils. I'm excited that the community and our elected officials believe that the state-of-the-art facility, the public safety building, uh, is gonna take us to the next level, ensuring the safety of our city and providing those we have entrusted with the best resources. In closing, ladies and gentlemen, the future is extremely bright here in the city of Brockton. As in all municipalities, we uh, will face challenges and we are better together. 
our positive collaboration and shared vision will take us to greater heights. As your mayor, I am committed and confident and I pledge to continue to work with you and to work for you. I thank you for your time. God bless you and your family. God bless the city of Brockton and the Commonwealth. Stay safe and it truly is an honor and a privilege to serve as the mayor of the city of Brockton. Thank you all.